In the last video, we talked about freelancing work. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at Uber as a case study. Now, you've probably heard of Uber by now. Uber was recently valued at over $50 billion, and they have operations in over 50 countries. Their business model is simple. They connect people who need a ride with drivers who are willing to drive them using their own personal vehicle. Now, if this sounds an awful lot like a traditional cab company, you're right. Uber competes directly with traditional cab companies. But unlike cab drivers, Uber drivers use their own car. And this means they're responsible for all the costs associated with using their vehicle, maintenance and repair costs, for example. The main service provided by Uber is this technology, this mobile application that connects people and facilitates automatic payment. To many, Uber is symbolic of a technology-mediated on-demand or gig economy. Early on, Uber and companies like it were seen as offering a new and very exciting way to work. You could drive whenever and wherever you wanted, and Uber claimed early on that the median salary for a driver working at least 40 hours a week in New York City was $50,000 a year. Since then, people have challenged these earning estimates, and some people have raised questions about some aspects of Uber's employment model. The critical issue is how these drivers are classified whether they're employees or independent contractors. The legal distinction has important implications for drivers' experiences and protections. Uber refers to its drivers as partners, but Uber does not consider its drivers employees, and many feel that they have virtually no input into company decisions, including pricing and passenger-related policies. For example, Uber retains full control over the base rates that drivers can charge. Uber started off with higher fares, but has cut them on multiple occasions in order to try to boost ridership. In fact, there are reports that UberX drivers, UberX being the most commonly used, lowest cost service, make only a little bit more than traditional cab drivers. And that's before factoring in all the costs that cab drivers don't have. Also, Uber drivers can be fired automatically by a computer if their passenger rating falls below a 4.6 on a scale from 1 to 5. Drivers have no way of contesting ratings that they perceive as being unfair, and Uber doesn't tell its passengers how their ratings might affect drivers' employment. A passenger might reasonably assume, therefore, that a 4-star rating is pretty good, but actually, 4-stars could nudge a driver below a 4.6 and therefore out of a job. Uber also collects, analyzes, and profits from a wealth of driver data, but is guarded about which data are shared back with drivers. In some states, drivers are trying to organize and collectively bargain. So in California, for example, drivers formed CADA, which stands for the California App-Based Drivers Association. But these drivers face a difficult road ahead because U.S. law does not require Uber to negotiate because Uber considers these drivers independent contractors, not employees. In other words, they're not management's problem. The city of Seattle acted on its own recently and passed a law that enabled Uber drivers to organize and negotiate for better conditions. Next summer, a federal court in California will hear arguments in a lawsuit that challenges the way that Uber classifies their drivers as independent contractors rather than employees. So as it stands, the California App-Based Drivers Association is trying to bring publicity to some of these issues, but it doesn't have very much leverage beyond that. So as Hillary Clinton points out, this on-demand or so-called gig economy is creating exciting opportunities and unleashing innovation, but it's also raising hard questions about workplace protection and what a good job will look like in the future. Beyond policy solutions, some entrepreneurs are stepping forward with ideas for improving on-demand workers' experiences. SherpaShare, for example, helps Uber drivers manage their earnings and job-related expenses and also connects them with similar workers in their area. So the question that I would pose to you as a class is, what do you recommend that Uber drivers do to improve their employment circumstances? For one thing, do you think our current policies are sufficient for on-demand workers? If not, how might they be improved? How might worker-sided technologies such as SherpaShare also improve the experiences for these workers?